Before he died with great dignity, he gathered our family together and emphatically told us he had given his all for his family, for his country, and for his causes. And then he exhorted us to do the same. It is to advance the noble cause of human rights that the Lantos Foundation was established. Our mission is to strengthen and uphold the role of human rights in American foreign policy. Sometimes, admittedly, this is easier said than done. Because standing up for those whose rights are being trampled usually offends the tramplers. Tom Lantos believed that American leadership in opposition to human rights abuses, not silence, is the truest expression of our national character. His voice was among the clearest and most persuasive in our country, urging Americans to experience assaults on anyone's dignity as an assault on our own conscience. Who can know how many seekers of justice and human rights will suffer persecution, destruction, or even death at the hands of dictators if we are idle even for just one moment? We must not only remember the atrocities of the fascists, but also recognize that today authoritarianism is firmly entrenched And that is one reason why countries like China are so eager to create this information prison, to cut people off from the knowledge of what their fellow citizens are doing, of what's happening outside, of the criticism of their government, of what's happened in the past, of all of that information. Because that sort of knowledge is what, where people find the courage and the strength to say no. I will not put up with this. I am going to take a stand. I'm willing to take this risk. Simply stated, people want the freedom to practice or to not practice any religion according to the dictates of conscience. You and six others have signed a letter to the Saudi embassy offering to take 100 lashes apiece. We do believe that our letter and the attention that it has elicited has played a role in the fact that in the five weeks since Rafe was first lashed in this outrageous and brutal sentence he received, um, he has not been lashed again. We subsequently posted a, a petition uh, on change.org what made our petition on behalf of Rafe a little different is we actually asked people not to sign it unless they too felt that they were prepared to follow through. When we allow anti-Semitism to take root, then our souls are destroyed. And that's why tonight, for the first time ever, congregations around the world are celebrating a solidarity Shabbat. It's a chance for leaders to publicly stand against anti-Semitism and bigotry in all of its forms. And I'm proud to be a part of this movement. I'm proud that Six ambassadors from Europe are joining us today, and their presence here, our presence together, is a reminder that we are not doomed to repeat the mistakes of the past. A 
And you know, there are many explanations for this prize fighter's stamina. But the only real explanation for this relentless life in the pursuit of peace and justice is sitting right there. And my mother was the one who who sort of took that big picture and helped my father to understand and recognize that it's meaningless unless it is changing the lives of, of human beings, unless it's bettering their lives. Surrounding me are my children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Be reaffirmed today and forever that like Abraham of old, we choose goodness over evil light over darkness, and we choose life. Thank you. Tom once said he was a humble worker in the vineyard of the enterprise to make this world a saner place. But we all know the truth, that he had a unique call to conscience, a permanent vigilance against discrimination, genocide, oppression, and anti-Semitism. As Annette says, he was democracy's staunchest defender, and that was the core value of his existence. This foundation really embodies Tom's spirit. And it's quite humbling for people like Madeleine Albright, my dear friend, and I to know that secretaries of state come and go. But what remains is that profound commitment to making a difference in whatever position we find ourselves, and standing up and speaking out for those who might otherwise never have a voice. Ladies and gentlemen, we face a huge challenge, and political correctness, denial, surveillance, military means, it's not going to get us out. Appeasement is not going to get us out. We have to have a clear-headed confrontation with evil, because if we fail to recognize evil, we'll never be able to defeat it. I hope you will join me in doing something when we see evil, in confronting it. I hope you'll join me in being ordinary people who take every opportunity to do the right thing. I thank you all for listening to my words today, and I thank the Lentos Foundation from the bottom of my heart. We are our brothers and sisters keepers. We need to speak up because the bell always sounds for us. We cannot be bystanders. It's not enough not to be a perpetrator. You must not be a bystander. <laughs>